Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is September 24th, 2016. I want to thank everybody for sending all of your emails in with photographs and video. We have been overwhelmed with data over the past five days. And if you have not received an email returned from us, we are getting to them. It is just the video and the photographs are absolutely overwhelming. And I must personally thank each and every one of you for doing a fantastic job. We were in meetings yesterday trying to determine what is happening with the sun. We feel that the problems that are occurring right now with our sun are definitely factors into finding out what is going on with this nemesis solar system and these planetary objects in our skies. Now, it seems that the sun is losing its energy and possibly internal pressure. It also seems that in a period of 180 days, the sun goes very dim for a period of about one hour. These photographs are all taken from the SOHO and LASCO space telescopes. These photographs were also dated for yesterday, September 23rd, 2016. I know a lot of you may not understand this particular graph, but like I said, it seems that the sun is flatlining for a period of about one hour every single day where it basically almost goes completely dim like its energy is being sucked out of it. The sun produces a lot of electromagnetic energy as does a brown dwarf star which is the center of the nemesis solar system. We feel at this time the interaction between the brown dwarf star and the sun is causing the sun to go dim for this period of one hour. This data has come in and has been placed all together for a period of the last 180 days. It is consistent. It seems the closer the brown dwarf star gets to the sun in its orbit around the sun, the more negative effect it is having on the sun. It is drawing intense electromagnetic energy from our sun. The sun has been producing very strange photographic anomalies because I see all of these in your photographs that you sent in, such as what is on your screen now. We feel once again that these anomalies are due to a sun simulator that has been placed in orbit around the sun by, obviously, world governments. The photograph that you're looking at now was captured on an FAA sky cam, and we feel that this is a photograph of the lenses on this device that is focusing the sun's rays to the earth, simply because the sun does not have the energy to heat the earth. We also feel that this sun simulator device is able to be controlled electronically from the ground, from Earth. There is absolutely no doubt that the Sun has gone through changes caused by its interaction with this brown dwarf star nemesis. I think our governments knew that this would happen, so the building of this device in space was mandatory. We also feel that this device acts as a cloaking device, so we don't see what is actually in our skies. Now, some of the following photographs were sent in by our Nibiru watchers, and you can clearly see these are very, very abnormal looking sun rays. They're blue. In this photograph, you can clearly see it's reflecting a planetary object of some kind to the left. Now, we don't feel that is the actual planet that you are seeing, but something as if it would be a holographic image of what is close and behind the sun and it is producing this type of reflection or refraction but there is no way that that is any kind of a lens flare or photographic anomaly that object is near the sun and behind the sun to the left that much is very very clear the following photographs show this flower petal effect 
on the sun, and the sun does not have a normal shape. These three photographs absolutely prove what I am saying. The sun cannot possibly have these three different types of shapes. It is impossible unless it is artificially manufactured. So basically, folks, what I'm trying to say, the sun that's in the sky that you're looking at, it's not real. Now, there is our sun behind this device, but what is shining down on the earth? It's just not real, and they are trying to deceive us. Now, this photograph just proves, again, what I'm talking about. Look at the shape of the sun. It almost looks like a headlight on a car. It is refracting sunlight off of an object to the left, and you can clearly see that object. Now, I can't say for sure if that object is actually right there or that is the image that is being reflected in the photograph. This is a blown up version of the photograph that you just saw on the video. Does it actually look like a lens flare? It has entirely too much detail, perfectly spherically shaped. That is a planet. It is near our sun, and the powers that be think that they are fooling us, and they are not. Because like I said, knowledge is power, and we have that power. Now, I just want to touch base on some of the meteor activity that we are seeing in the skies. These two photographs were sent in by one of our Nibiru watchers. He was on the ball, had his cell phone ready, and snapped two photographs of an inbound meteor. It burned up in the sky, thank God. Now, last night, we had one of our guys here monitoring the Meteor Scan website. There was a lot of activity, and then, this morning, it kind of slowed down, almost to the point where about every hour, we would see some spikes on the Meteor Scan website. And you are viewing these actual scans from, I think, about 9 o'clock this morning, and then it was calm again. The two meteor photographs that you viewed previously also came with some video. Our subscriber was smart enough to snap some photographs in the beginning and then started to shoot some video. He actually captured two meteors shooting across the sky almost in opposite directions. And you can clearly see this is not an airplane. It is not a chemtrail. These are meteors that are falling from the sky and burning up in the atmosphere. Now, like I said in some of our previous videos, folks, we took a lot of heat for our initial video, giving out the information on the possible incoming catastrophe. Thank God it was all handled. And, you know, like I said, I have to give a, a big thumbs up to NASA. I mean, if in fact they did what they did, well, they saved us. From a big catastrophe now some other youtube channels are making their own videos critiquing our initial report on this asteroid story and they are stating oh look now they're making another video and they're covering their asses by saying this and that well no folks that's not the case we kept everyone up to date on what was happening we kept you up to date more than your governments and your media didn't keep you in the loop at all. We did. And the people that are making these videos are just your ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill Mary and Joe. Popping out a video in their kitchen. All of a sudden, they're able to critique information that was given to our channel. And we were spot on. Let me make that point very clear. The first meteors were coming down on the 18th and 19th, and then meteors were seen in Canada and the northern tier of the east coast of the United States. And I also want to say this, for all of the negative videos that were placed up on YouTube pertaining to our initial story, all you folks did was point people in the right direction to find the truth and to open their eyes. In the meantime, you were closing their eyes and you were spreading disinformation. And that's not what we're here to do. You should be trying to protect mankind, not spread disinformation. So what do you have to say about that? Well, all I could say is you go ahead and continue making videos in your kitchen and popping them up on YouTube. 
All I know is this situation was very serious. We took it very seriously. And we do care about mankind at this channel. And we will continue to do our jobs, folks. So at this point in time, I'm going to put my tinfoil foodora on. And I want to thank all of our Nibiru watchers out there all across the world. Absolutely love you guys. You're doing a fantastic job. You can keep sending your videos and your photographs in to NibiruPlanetX2016 at gmail.com. And don't worry, we get backed up a little bit on the email, but we will get back to you. You can share all of our videos with your friends and family members on Facebook. And like I said, get them involved. Don't forget to subscribe to the Nibiru channel and keep yourself updated. And like I always say, keep an eye in the sky. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Nibiru channel. It is September 24th, 2016. I want to thank everybody for sending all of your emails in with photographs and video. We have been overwhelmed with data over the past five days. And if you have not received an email returned from us, we are getting to them. It is just the video and the photographs are absolutely overwhelming. And I must personally thank each and every one of you for doing a fantastic job. We were in meetings yesterday trying to determine what is happening with the sun. We feel that the problems that are occurring right now with our sun are definitely factors into finding out what is going on with this nemesis solar system and these planetary objects in our skies. Now, it seems that the sun is losing its energy and possibly internal pressure. It also seems that in a period of 180 days, the sun goes very dim for a period of about one hour. These photographs are all taken from the SOHO and LASCO space telescopes. These photographs were also dated for yesterday, September 23, 2016. I know a lot of you may not understand this particular graph, but like I said, it seems that the sun